Hey guys, how's it going? Oscar here, back with another video. Today I'm going to be going into my template of how I like to create music in Ableton and hopefully you can take away some ideas from this that you can put towards your, uh, your template that you're going to build. So let me start off with the time locators. In this project, I've got some time locators set up. The intro, interest, drop, switch, break, drop, switch, outro. So these are broken down into areas where I want to focus on in terms of arrangement. So when I've like d done my first initial eight bar loop and I've like made it to the point where I want to get it to, then I can start splitting things off into the places that might fit into the intro or a switch, um, a break in the interest, some element for an outro. Uh, just, it gives me a basic map of starting to think about structure once I've, once I'm happy with the loop. It's just things like that. They just make the, uh, it just streams streamlines the workflow, and it's just a useful. It, it just helps me build a track quicker than if that th these weren't there. It's just a more of a visual thing than anything else. So the reason I've got everything set up in one big group, so it's collapsible like that, is so that I can route things into a, my pre master and have reference tracks in the project, and. I'll show you how to set that up. I'll show you how to set it up now. So on every, every group that you've got coming in, so I've got these set up to, uh, my drums are going straight to this pre-master bus. I've got all these uh, instrument sample. Um, so I've got an instrument group, a sample group, mid bass group, a subgroup, and an effects group. And they're all going to my chains. And these chains, so everything that's so everything that's in pink is going to this main chain. The sub is going through to the sub chain, and then I've got a chain group, which is the output of both of these chains going going into this together, which would be an output to this pre-master. Now the reason that I've done things like that is just so that I can have my subs being uh, side chained and limited separately from everything else that's in the track, and then I can put this EQ on the on the main chain. And that way, everything that's being rooted into this main chain has just got a low pass on it, saving, saving processing power on all these other sections by having a, uh, having a low pass on there just to keep everything managed. And then the drums aren't going into that because I don't want the drums being affected by any processing that's going on in these chains. And they're going, both of those chains are being output to this pre-master and they're being output to the master. If I drag in a reference track into this project whilst I'm working on it, I can get the project loud enough to sound like just, just to sound identical to the reference track. And then I can see where areas are missing in my track. It, it, what this has done is helped me, it's helped me develop at a quicker rate than, than that, what I would if I just kept doing the same process over and over again. I definitely recommend using reference tracks, especially when you're mixing things down because you'll start to notice elements of your track that are missing compared to the track that you're referencing. How, it will help you understand how little detail that you're putting into your tracks that your favorite artists are putting into theirs. And it really makes you think that you need to up your game and you start producing that to a higher level and a higher quality a lot quicker. And I've got a sidechain trigger set up as well as I've got a drum rack here, so I can an empty drum rack, so I can drag all my samples in um, or instruments or whatever I, I want to use my kick and snare with, then I can take the MIDI and just throw that up into the side chain. That's just some white noise that's playing really sharply to trigger the side chain uh, plugin that I've got here. I've got a few of these quick edit racks as well set up on different channels. So it's just a basic uh, utility, EQ and compressor. And it's just the basic settings that I need to just quickly edit something on the go. Basic volume, some stereo control, low cut, high cut, and yeah, just some compression levels. How I've come to create this is by looking up different things on YouTube and seeing what people have done for their, um, their templates, and then sort of try to see the reason behind why they've done those things. So to make your template, you need to think what what are you spending too much time doing 
in your productions that you want to be doing less time of so you can spend more time being creative. And that's the whole reason behind having a template. Because some people don't like to have any at all. And that's fine. Like, if you're sending your tracks off to get mixed by someone else, then you don't need a template. You're just randomly throwing sounds into an empty project and you're going to leave the mixing up to someone else to deal with. Or you have a separate mixing uh, template or mixing thing. Maybe you like to create an Ableton and mix in Logic or Pro Tools. Then you won't do any of this. But I like to keep it all in the same in the same software to just do everything in one project. The whole reason for having a project set up, like a template set up for your project, is so that you can spend less time with your engineering hat on and more time producing and being creative. So any of the, uh, any, all of these like EQs, like cleaning up or you know, you're compressing all the time, you're trying to get the track to sound good before you, you, before you move on. Like, if you're engineering whilst you're creating, you'll slow down the creative process. And if you ask any producer that's been producing for a long time, they write their best ideas in, the sh in, an, in short periods of time, usually between like three to eight hours. Like they'll produce an entire track in one sitting. And that's when you get your best ideas out. And I've, I've got that from personal experience. So like if you finish a track from start to finish in the, sh in the shortest period of time possible, then you'll, um, you tend to get the best, all of your ideas out in one, in one sitting. And this project just allows me to work at a fast rate without putting the engineering hat on and dealing with that afterwards because everything's all predetermined and pre-rooted. And then when I do get down to the mixing stage, I can reference the track and A-B it compared to my mix and I know exactly where to move from that point onwards. So yeah, if there's anything else you guys want me to talk about in terms of this, anything that I've glanced over or I've accidentally edited out, um, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a follow-up video on this because I've had to re-record this like three times because I keep slipping up. If you like the video guys, uh, hit the like button, subscribe and share the video with your friends, it really helps me out. I'll see you in the next video guys. Daily content. Peace.